You're listening to the New Hope Church podcast. To learn more about what we're doing on the south side of Indianapolis, you can check us out online at becomehope.com. If you like what you're hearing here, be sure you check out one of our companion podcasts. We have a daily devotional podcast called Let's Find Out Together, as well as an apologetics podcast called Salty Saints. Let's listen in as today's talk comes from Randy Spade. Thank you so much for coming to be with us today. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been working our way through the book of Proverbs. Two weeks ago, uh, we took a look at the structure of the book of Proverbs. Last week, we talked about wisdom and folly. And today, we're going to take just a topic, just one theme from the book of Proverbs and kind of dig a little bit deeper in that. Before we do that, though, Let me talk to you about something that took place 120 years ago. In the early 1900s, there were a number of different scientists who did the same study in many different locations, and they came out with the same results. The study was they would take one rat and one cage and two bottles of water. One was filled with just water. The other was filled with water laced with drugs. The drug of choice would have been heroin. They also used cocaine. And in each study, the rat, after sampling both bottles, would return to the bottle of water laced with drugs. 100% of the time. No exceptions. And in each case, the rat would literally drink itself to death. Now they concluded as a result of that study that drugs form within us a chemical dependency. We keep going back to it again and again, even when we know that it's harming us. They determined that the way to break that dependence is simply by sheer force of will. And that force can be the will of the addict or the will of those around the addict. And so they came up with the idea of interventions. Now, in an intervention, all of the loved ones of the addict come together and they bring the addict in, they isolate the addict, and they shock them with the reality of their own behavior. And they let the addict know that if the addict does not change their behavior, they'll be cut off. Well, Proverbs has a lot to say about addiction as well. So we're just going to take a look through Proverbs. We're going to be jumping around quite a bit in the book of Proverbs today. One of the first things that Proverbs tells us is that all of us, bar none, are addicted to sin. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 say, evil people can't sleep until they've done their evil deed for the day. They can't rest until they've caused someone else to stumble. They eat the food of wickedness. They drink the wine of violence. Proverbs tells us that people are compelled to sin. They've tasted that water bottle full of water laced with sin. And they keep going back to it again and again and again. Even when they want to stop, they can't stop. Proverbs 5 says, An evil man is held captive by his own sins. There are ropes that catch him and and hold him. He will die for lack of self-control. He'll be lost because of his great foolishness. Even when the individual knows 
the consequences of sin is destruction. They keep going back to it. Proverbs 25, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. I don't know about you, but to me that certainly sounds like addiction. So what is addiction? I looked up a a definition and uh, here's what I found. An addiction is a need for a habit that has harmful effects. That's the very basic definition there. Look at the highlighted words. An addiction is a need for a habit that harms you. Now we can expand that definition. The need is compulsive. We can't get away from it. We can't stop. It's chronic. It's not one and done. It's repetitive. It keeps coming back. It can be physiological or it can be psychological. The habit itself could be a habit-forming substance. It could be a behavior. Or it could be an impulse. And the harmful effects, well, they might be physical. They might be psychological. But usually they are social. They affect not only the addict, but the people around the addict. So we're going to look at what the book of Proverbs has to tell us about addictions. And we're going to do that by looking at many of these things in the definition. And every time the book of Proverbs has something to say about that, we'll just stop Take a look at Proverbs and see what it has to say. Let's start with the three common types of addiction. There are substance, behavior, and impulse addictions. We'll start with behavioral addictions. Gambling. Gambling can become an addiction. It's interesting to me that now that we're in the thick of sports, uh, I assume that some laws have changed and... They can advertise betting sites because it seems like every other commercial is a betting site. It also seems that in almost every commercial, at the end of the commercial, they, in those uh, 60 mile a minute words at the very end, will tell you what to do if you become addicted to gambling. Or there are separate commercials where the Mannings stand up and tell you what to do if you develop a gambling addiction. But gambling can become an addiction. You've probably heard of retail therapy, right? We even make little jokes about it. Shopping can become an addiction. Now, Proverbs actually has something to say about that. Those who love pleasure become poor. Those who love wine and luxury will never be rich. There are some who simply are in love with buying. And they love it so much that they don't stop. And as a result, they end up poor without enough money to pay their normal bills. Sex can be an addiction. Whether that's pornography or prostitution, or even just plain simple sex. When it comes to consume us, when that's all that we think about, it becomes an addiction. The internet can be an addiction, whether that's just surfing on the internet or or maybe social media or gaming on the internet. They're things that can rob our life by consuming us. Even work can be an addiction. And here again, Proverbs speaks to that. Proverbs chapter 23 says, Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. In the blink of an eye, 
wealth disappears. It will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. Now, if you'll notice, these things, they're, they're not necessarily bad things. We all have to shop in the right context. Sex is a wonderful thing. The internet, a very useful tool. Work, we all have to work. But when these things consume us, when we can't get away from them, they become an addiction. They begin to have negative consequences in our lives. That's what we're talking about. Well, these are behavioral addictions. Let's take a look at substance addictions. Tobacco can be a substance addiction. We all know how difficult it is to leave tobacco once we've begun to chew or to smoke. Recreational drugs are addictive. But today, perhaps even more problematic than that are prescription drugs. There are people who have become hooked on prescription drugs. Alcohol can become an addiction. And here again, Proverbs speaks to alcohol. Proverbs chapter 20 says, wine produces mockers. Alcohol leads to brawls. Those led astray by drink cannot be wise. If we allow it, alcohol can consume us so that all we're thinking about is the next drink. And we're not able to simply take a drink, it's several drinks until we begin to get a buzz and then to actually lose control. These are things that control us and consume us. These are addictions that we need to control instead of being controlled by them. Then finally, there are impulse addictions. For example, emotional outbursts, or to use a more popular term, drama. <laughs> you know, there are people who just crave drama, and if there's not enough drama in their life, they'll make it. Destructive behavior. Cutting. There are people who just can't stop cutting on their own flesh. Addictive behaviors. Food. Food can become an addiction. Whether it's avoiding food or binging on food. Again, Proverbs talks about that. Proverbs chapter 25. Do you like honey? Well, don't eat too much. It'll make you sick. <laughs> Solomon sounds like my mom sometimes. Or Proverbs 23. While dining with a ruler, pay attention to what's put before you. If you're a big eater, put your knife to your throat. Don't desire all the delicacies, for he might be trying to trick you. It's Solomon just saying, be careful, be careful. These things can come to control us. So what do we do? Now, the book of Solomon mentions the addictions, but it spends much more time talking about uh, what we do about the addictions that we have. What are signs that we have an addiction. I dare say, of the list that I put up there, probably all of us have at one point in our life shopped. Many of us have engaged in sex. When does it start becoming an addiction? Well, there are three main signs 
of addiction. They're called the three C's. The first is loss of control. That's the first C. The addict can no longer control when they engage in the behavior. That behavior simply takes over. The second C is craving, compulsive use. It's beyond just a simple enjoyment of food, for example. Now I crave it. I've got to sit down and consume more and more and more. The third C is continued use in the face of consequences. Even when I know it's hurting me, I go back and I do it over and over and over. Let's take a look at these. Loss of control. The way that plays out, it could be obsessive thoughts or obsessive actions. Compulsions. Frequently there is a denial of addiction. If somebody brings it to your attention, aren't you drinking a little bit too much there? Well, I'm not an alcoholic. Not me. I can stop anytime I want to. I just don't want to. Binging. Sometimes we can recognize an addiction when we just go overboard. And it's even overboard by our own definition. Frequently there's defensiveness or rationalization. Yeah, it's just not that bad with me. I'm okay. I have control over it. And many times, lying. So where'd you go tonight? Oh, just out. I wasn't at the bar. The second C, craving and compulsive use, frequently is accompanied by isolation. You isolate yourself in order to engage in the behavior and in increased behavior. Financial problems many times, especially when the addiction is an expensive habit, can put you in financial problems. You have enough money for your habit, but not for the monthly bills. Loss of interest in other things. Everything else kind of falls to the wayside. You're focused on the addictive behavior. The third C is continued use in the face of consequences. You disregard the harm. A smoker might begin to cough and yet continue to smoke. The addiction is there. An alcoholic might recognize that they don't feel good, but they continue to drink. You begin to miss work or school, sometimes directly because of the addiction, sometimes simply because you've lost interest in anything else. An inability to deal with stress, little things, things that before wouldn't affect you now are major things. Relationship problems. This goes with almost all addictions. Someone notices, someone calls it to your attention, and as a result, you're in conflict with that person. Blaming others. It's not my fault. I learned how to drink from fill in the blank. So what do we do about it? All of this is just interesting information, but it's not really useful unless we can do something about our own addictions and the addictions of the people that we love. Proverb tells us about that. But before we go there, I'd like to go back about 50 years to a different laboratory. This laboratory is in Canada. Scientist, a, a psychologist actually, by the name of Bruce Alexander, examined 
the experiments done with rats some 70 years before. And as he looked at those experiments, he said, there's a problem with these experience. experiments. He said, uh, a rat is by nature a social being. You might hear about lone wolves. You don't hear about lone rats. You see one and you set out traps because you know there are others around. Rats live in community. But in the experiment, the rats were placed in solitary confinement. Friends, solitary confinement drives you crazy. And these rats, forced to be in solitary confinement, when given the choice of a drug that would help them live outside of their solitary confinement, chose the drugs. So what Bruce Alexander did is he studied rats and he found out what made rats happy. An environment where they could play made them happy. Wood chips that they could bury themselves in. Colored balls that they could push around. Exercise made them happy. So he put wheels and ramps inside the cage. Other rats made them happy. So he put them in the cage in a community. Food made them happy. So he made sure that there was always food available to them. He called the cage Rat Park. It was rat heaven. Then... Into each rat park, he introduced two water bottles. One was a water bottle filled with water and just water. The other was a water bottle filled with water laced with drugs. 100% of the rats, after sampling both bottles, chose the water and avoided the drugs. They didn't need it. They were happy. They were enjoying life. None of the rats wanted the drugged water. He concluded that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. When you are connected with other people, you don't need the drugs. You don't need the addiction. This is why when your 85-year-old grandmother gets a hip replacement and they put her in the hospital, give her the hip replacement, and then put her on morphine or heroin, she does not come out of the hospital a junkie. She comes out of the hospital just fine. When the pain is gone, there's no use for the drugs. She doesn't take them because she's connected to you and to others in your family. The connection is there and the need for addiction is not. Remember that. And let's go back to the book of Proverbs. Let's see what Proverbs says that we should do about our addictions. First thing that it says is when you're addicted, recognize your addiction. Proverbs 14, 16 says, The wise is cautious and turns from evil. But the fool throws off restraint and is confident. The fool looks at the addiction and says, Who cares? Let's keep on doing it. The wise is cautious. He looks at what's going on and he says, that's not right. I shouldn't be doing that. And he stops. Once you recognize your addiction, you need to connect with other people. Now, Proverbs tells us that there are several ways to do that. First, find someone else to help. Some people are always greedy for more. They're addicted 
to possessions. They're always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. Find somebody who needs help and help them out. Connect with them. Be a friend to them. It actually ends up helping you. Keep good company. We connect with others when we keep good company. The book of Proverbs tells us, My child, listen and be wise. Keep your heart on the right course. Don't carouse with drunkards or feast with gluttons. They're on their way to poverty. Too much sleep clothes them in rags. Solomon tells us that bad friends can drag us down. If we are with friends who are addicted, we're probably going to become addicted to the very same things. Keep good company. Have good friends. Solomon goes on to tell us that some friends actually build you up. Connect with others. Find someone to whom you can be accountable. Proverbs 27 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another friend. Having good friends can help you, especially when they see what's going wrong in your life, talk to you about it and say, let's walk through this together. Iron sharpens iron. The third thing to do, addiction is very complex. There is a chemical dependency side of it. There is also an isolation side of it. If you today are addicted to something, a 20-minute sermon is not going to change that. Seek help. Find a counselor. Look for help. Again, Proverbs tells us, where there is no guidance, people fall. But in an abundance of counselors, there's victory. And then again, plans go wrong for lack of advice. But many advisors bring success. Let's review. What do we do about our addictions? First of all, we recognize it. Then we connect with others. We find somebody else that we can help. We keep good company. We avoid friends that would drag us down back into the addiction. And we find someone that we can be accountable to. And then finally, we seek help because we will need help in getting out of this. My friends, many of us live knowing each other, considering each other friends, but we don't know the inner workings of our lives. Many addicts, you would never know. If today you are addicted, if one of these things on the screen stood out to you, if you saw something up there and your first thought was, oh, please don't talk about that. You need help. Or maybe it's not you. Maybe someone in your life is addicted and you look at that someone and you just feel totally helpless because you've tried, you've talked and talked, and nothing seems to change them. What do you do? Well, what you do is you connect. Interventions are a great way to keep an addict an addict to let somebody know that they are isolated. And they will be isolated more if they continue in their behavior. 
an addict will disregard consequences to prefer his or her addiction. What they need is connection. What they need is for you to come alongside them and say, you know what, I love you and I'm going to be with you no matter what. But you don't need the addiction. You got me. If you're addicted or someone in your life is addicted, connect with them. That's what the book of Proverbs says. In summary, all we're trying to say is that if you want to live, love, and go like Jesus, choose wisdom. <laughs> choose the right path. Do the right thing. Connect. Let somebody know that you see the problem. You understand what they're going through. And you'll walk through it with them. And they don't need the substance or the behavior or the impulse that they're participating in. Thanks for tuning in to the New Hope Church podcast. If you would do us a favor and like or subscribe on your favorite platform, we would really appreciate it. Also, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at questions at becomehope.com. Have a great week and know that we are praying for you as you seek to be Jesus in every corner of your world.